for these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins as we ask the Lord for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, for Jew, Jew first and then Greek. For, it is, for in it is revealed the righteousness of God from faith to faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous by faith will live. The wrath of God is indeed being revealed from heaven against every impiety and wickedness of those who suppress the truth by their wickedness. For what can be known about God is evident to them, because God made it evident to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes of eternal power and divinity have been made able to be understood and perceived in what he has made. As a result, they have no excuse. For although they knew God, they did not accord him glory as God or give him thanks. Instead, they became vain in their reasoning, and their senseless minds were darkened. While claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for the likeness of an image of mortal man or of birds or of four-legged animals or of snakes. Therefore, God handed, over to, handed them over to impurity through the lusts of their hearts for the mutual degradation of their bodies. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and revered and worshiped the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Alleluia, 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 
The Word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools, did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? For as it is, but as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. We have been made by God for God. If we ever lose sight of that, we get lost. Sometimes in man's search for meaning, he looks so much within himself, he forgets to see the reflection of the Creator, that we are creatures of God. And we start to learn about ourselves when we stand before Christ, or as Paul would say, before the gospel, that the gospel is the power of God. The gospel is truth. The gospel is Christ. And if I take the gospel out, I'm going to look within only. Self-reflection is good, but we do not have only self-reflection without reflecting upon the Creator. Paul speaks of the time that creation is turning within and is not recognizing the creation and the Creator as it is meant to be. And he says, and then it becomes distorted. And he says that God has then given that over to those who choose to worship false gods even though our worship is meant for God alone. We worship and adore the Lord God alone. People worship themselves. I remember years ago in seminary, one of the professors spoke of the cult of the body. He says, in our generation, people worship their bodies. They love to look at themselves in the mirror all day long. When they go to work out, I'm not against working out, but it's all about me. And it's not all about me. It's about God. It's about us. When we start to circle just around the body, then it's, like, then it's about pleasing the body. And Paul then gets into those who hand themselves over their, over their bodies to each other, just for each other, and they lose sight of God. There's this degradation of the body because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's to be holy. And if we take the creator away from the creature, the creatures just think of only themselves. And how sad that is. How sad it is that they don't look within as Jesus says to the Pharisees. He says, look within not just on the outside of the cup, but recognize what's inside and what's going on. And God knows and Jesus knows what's going on inside of our heart, inside of our world, where it's turned upside down and craziness. And we think, well, what are we to do? We'll hold on to the one who is constant. God is immovable, constant forever, that he, he is truth. He is love. 
That's who we hold on to. Many people ask, what are we to do in this time? Probably at the same time as Paul, difficult times, is we turn to the gospel. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, nor should we. We shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel. Sometimes we may not understand fully the teachings of of Christ, the teachings of the gospel, the teachings of the church, but we should always still be proud of the faith, proud of the truth. The truth will always set us free. Please stand. Let us now lift up our prayers to our Heavenly Father who knows all of our needs. Let us pray for the church, especially for those who suffer within the church because of the lack of freedom to practice the faith. We pray to the Lord. For true peace and justice in our world, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are searching, that they look within, but then they look to the Lord God who created them, who made them, that they will begin to understand themselves. We pray to the Lord. For the sick and the suffering, for the end to the virus, the end to suffering. For those who have asked for our prayers in any special way, we pray to the Lord. For the soul of Carolyn Diero, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that you hold in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, you have created us for you. Help us never to place anything or anyone before you, to worship you alone. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, hey, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death 
manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he is betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Amen. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, peace, glorify the Lord by your life.